In this presentation, we dig a bit deeper into one of the most essential tools in transportation planning, namely travel surveys. As highlighted in the previous presentation, travel surveys provide detailed insights into how people move through cities and regions, shaping transportation policies that aim to improve mobility for everyone. We'll examine key travel surveys and also take a look at some exciting new developments, such as the Google Timeline data and the Anlokov dataset, which has recently become available to the research community. Travel surveys capture detailed data on people's daily movements, from the types of transportation they use to the reasons for their trips. By collecting information on travel modes, trip purposes, distances, and socioeconomic characteristics, these surveys offer planners the data they need to understand and improve transportation systems. The UK National Travel Survey, NTS, has been a cornerstone of transportation policy in the UK since 1965. This long-running survey tracks travel behavior across all modes of transport, providing invaluable insights into how people commute, shop, and engage in leisure activities. Over the years, NTS data has shown shifts from car usage to public transportation and active modes like cycling and walking, influencing government investments in these areas. In Belgium, two critical surveys have shaped national transportation policy, Mobile in the early 2000s and Beldum in 2010. These surveys provided rich data sets on Belgian travel behavior, helping planners understand how people move through urban and rural areas. For example, Beldum data revealed how commuters combine multiple transportation modes, cars, public transport, and bicycles, highlighting the need for multimodal infrastructure. Additionally, Brussels has recently joined the OVG survey, which was traditionally limited to the Flemish region. This inclusion marks an important step toward a more integrated view of travel behavior across Belgium. However, the Walloon region is still not part of this effort, raising questions about when they might join and contribute to a more unified dataset for the country. The shift to online data collection in Monitor. In recent years, travel surveys have shifted to online data collection in many countries, including Belgium, the Monitor survey is one such example, where participants now fill out surveys online. While this shift has made data collection more cost-effective, it has also introduced some challenges. Notably, the trip rates recorded in Monitor have been below acceptable thresholds, suggesting that the accuracy and depth of data collected may be compromised in this new format. This highlights the need to maintain rigorous standards even as we move towards more digital forms of data collection. Maybe constants in travel behavior. Despite changes in transportation technology and infrastructure, some elements of travel behavior have remained relatively stable over time. These are often called the constants. For example, research shows that the average travel time budget it is the amount of time people spend traveling each day, hovers around 70 to 75 minutes, a trend seen across many countries. Similarly, household expenditure on transportation tends to remain stable, usually taking up 10 to 15% of total household budgets. And finally, the number of trips per day tends to be consistent, with most people making between three to four trips daily. In Germany and the Netherlands, planners benefit from long-term data provided by mobility panels. These panels, such as the German Mobility Panel and the Dutch Mobility Panel, track the same households over multiple years, giving valuable insights into how travel behavior changes over time. This longitudinal data is essential for understanding the long-term impact of transportation policies and infrastructure investments. Alongside traditional surveys, 
Google Timeline data has emerged as a valuable tool for understanding mobility patterns. This data is collected through users' smartphones, offering highly accurate information about where people travel, how long their trips take, and what modes of transport they use. While this data is anonymized, it provides an additional layer of detail, particularly in real-time monitoring. Another valuable data source is the Anlokov dataset, which was made available to the research community following the COVID-19 pandemic. This dataset provides a unique view of how mobility patterns shifted during lockdowns, offering critical insights into how people's travel behaviors changed under restricted conditions. By analyzing Anne Lokov data, researchers have been able to assess the pandemic's impact on activity participation. With the growing complexity of transportation systems, it's more important than ever to make data open and accessible to researchers, policymakers, and the public. Open data not only improves transparency, but also allows for collaborative problem solving. Data from sources like Google Timeline Data and National Travel Surveys should be made widely available to foster innovation and allow for more robust analysis. An open data ecosystem will help us develop transportation systems that are more efficient, equitable and sustainable. In the next video, we'll explore which key level of service indicators can be used in transportation planning, turning data into action.